Whatever your opinion be about the Crewster, the man still knows how to make a fun movie. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Mission Impossible 7 Dead Reckoning Part 1. The whole thing is about a AI entity system, basically Evil Chat GBT. It has the ability to basically break into any kind of software, any kind of defense system for anyone, but it also is somewhat self-aware, but not to the point that it is going to destroy us, but it has such immense power that everyone wants it. So Tom Cruise and crew have to find a key, a specific looking key that is has the ability to unlock it. But while everyone wants it for themselves, Tom wants it so he can destroy it because this is the right thing to do. And probably my first compliment about this movie is despite the fact that it is near on three hours long, you will not feel it. It has a amazing pacing system very much like the last film even though it goes way longer than you would think it should you are still entertained right from the opening with the submarine bit and i feel that that pace that intensity is throughout the film even when it comes to that long heavy dialogue bits which that was something i was a little bit cautious about especially when some scenes kept getting into that really heavy talky bit because i'm like okay we'll have to see how hollywood handles ai because we've always seen this be very very silly or any kind of hacking bit but I do enjoy it because not only is the dialogue pretty decent it's pretty curt it's very intense in terms of the situations but also the camera work is helping you stay in energized it's helping you stay kinetic this film surprisingly is a little bit in the hearkening of Top Gun Maverick because there's a lot of callbacks to the first one subtly subtly done whether it's having the guy from the first movie again also the camera work there's a ton of camera work a lot of Dutch angles lighting uh, movements that are very reminiscent of the first film even some of the sequences even the train bit at the end and I feel though that while that is happening something that the first film kind of suffered from being like a little bit of an over convoluted plot and the thing that is a slight detractor from Fallout being that there is almost absolutely no plot is that Dead Reckoning Part 1 actually does have a decent plot. Christopher McGuire has done such a good job at getting better with every movie that he's worked on. If you go back and watch Jack Reacher, it's okay, but I think it's kind of cruddy. But looking at him now, this man has the intensity of the job that Michael Bay has, but far more of the artistic restraint and ingenuity that you would want from a director and not just brazen intensity and silliness and chaos he is able to finite everything every shot is something towards the progression of the escalation towards the crescendo of said action sequence and it works so well from the sound editing to the cinematography to the very harsh commitment to try to do as much of it real like the car chase sequence in italy they do some of the same shit that fast x did and they do it far better which by the way if you have seen fast x you're gonna get some really weird deja vu from this movie in multiple elements of the story and it just shows how fucking stupid those movies are that this movie can do almost beat for beat in certain sequences and do it better than a movie that strives itself on being cars and bullshit. In terms of the character development, I, I mean, you know, these movies have had like mild character development over the years, but you're very interested in everyone's story. Maybe the main bad guy is a little bit eh because they do once again very much like the Fast franchise. They try to throw in this element of something to do with Ethan's past and you're kind of like, eh but it's so short it's just like this happened that's it we're gonna kind of just build on that we're gonna learn more about this guy as we go along you don't get much more about him but you get that 
rivalry, that kill or be killed kind of relationship between him and Tom Cruise. I thought that Haley Atwell is fantastic in this. She's a great addition to the cast. The only thing that I might have a bit of a complaint about is where the film comes to its end. Because we as the audience know a lot more than Ethan Hunt, Tom Cruise's character, knows for a good long bit. And I kept thinking that maybe there was something alternative to his chase to his goal at the end of the movie but when the film does come to the end you are going to be like oh yeah i i, I knew that that's like my biggest complaint about this movie you will still be entertained you will still be one with the action you're going to be pulled in every step of the way from the car chases to the running sequences because of course the man's got to run and even some of the scenes that have no dialogue it's just music and that was something that they introduced in the last movie but remember when there was that random theory of what would happen if they they did a, a heist on an armored car and it was all done to music really cool action sequence but you didn't hear anything no gunshots you just heard music they do that again in this one and it worked really well christopher mcguire just gets it he gets what he has to do he knows what he has to do and he makes a fun movie. You don't have Henry Cavell reloading his arms, unfortunately, but I will say I had a very good time watching Dead Reckoning Part 1. I'm very interested to see what they do for Part 2. In the end, my final rating for Dead Reckoning Part 1 is a 5 out of 7. It's probably in my top 10 for the year, unless something beats it out. It's definitely like in like 10-9 because it was just a really fun movie. I feel like Fallout is still peak. Like, Fallout barely gives you a minute to breathe. Whereas Dead Reckoning does during the dialogue sequences, but that's still pretty intense. Overall, though, very enjoyable, very fun time. I thought that these two movies were going to be the last of the Mission Impossible movies, but if Tom Cruise and Christopher McGuire keep making movies like this, I'll keep watching them. I know that Tom will probably be a bot more fucking limber than Harrison Ford was at 80, so we'll see. Anyways, guys. Those are my thoughts. What did you guys think about the movie? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Oh, and one other thing. What is your favorite Mission Impossible movie? You've got a lot to choose from. Just curious. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.